Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. In my last lecture, I was discussing about uh, calcium sulphate dihydrate that is called gypsum and its conversion into plaster of Paris that is uh, calcium sulphate having half equivalent of uh, water. So, how it is done? Uh, take uh, calcium sulphate. 2 H 2 O, this is nothing but gypsum. Okay. So, this one on heating to 150 degree centigrade okay, loses water considerably to form this. Okay. So, here of course, uh, uh, one and a half molecules of water are lost in this one. Okay. So, this is called plaster of Paris. Paris. Uh, in case of beryllium, we come across another interesting molecule called basic beryllium acetate. Okay. And of course, analogous uh, lead acetate is also known basic lead acetate. How it is prepared? So, that means, uh, uh, the structure is quite interesting. In case of basic beryllium acetate, I will give you the preparation later. In case of basic beryllium acetate, also known as beryllium oxoethanoate, uh, it consists of a central oxygen atom surrounded by tetrahedron of 4 beryllium atoms. That means, imagine a, a beryllium tetrahedra very similar to white phosphorus at the center place oxygen and make the bonds. Then you have a mu 4 that means, oxygen connected to 4 beryllium atoms which are disposed to 4 corners of a tetrahedron okay, and which in turn are bridged by acetate ions. It can be prepared by the reaction of beryllium carbonate. with acetic acid in this one we get V O O 2 C C H 3 6 times of course, plus CO2 comes out plus 3 H2O will also form. Okay. So, in this one, this is also when, when we write O, this should be written as mu 4 O. That means, essentially, one can imagine a, a tetrahedron something like this. Okay, where we can place beryllium atoms at the center we have to put oxygen and establish bond with all the four of course you should remember here o will be in the form of o2 minus and lone pairs are there okay and this uh, makes covalent bonds with the two beryllium's and other two will be coordinate bond but uh, it is optimized all, uh, all appears like equivalent. So, this basic beryllium acetate is a colorless uh, sublimable molecular compound. It is soluble in chloroform from which it can be even recrystallized. I am showing in next slide the structure of this one. You can see here. Uh, 
So, in this one it is very clear. So, these four beryllium atoms are at four corners of a tetrahedron at the middle we have oxygen atom this is making bonds with all four beryllium atoms. Now, we have this acetate ions these acetate ions will be bridging two beryllium in this fashion. So, that we have totally six acetate ions bridging four beryllium atoms having this composition here B E 4 O acetate six times ok this is how the structure looks like ok the same structure I have shown here. So, let us look into the reactions of uh, alkaline earth metals with uh, carbon the group 2 metals form several types of carbides I just gave introduction to the different type of carbides here while discussing about the carbides I just mentioned that it forms something like this where we have C 4 minus whereas, in case of calcium we have C A 2 ok. So, here we have essentially C 2 2 minus and similarly in case of magnesium one can make a compound having this composition and the structure of this one can be written in this fashion. So, it is very interesting to see what would happen and what are the products we get when we hydrolyze this Mg to C 3 ok. Of course, if you are curious to know the structure of beryllium carbide and the structure will be something like this ok. In case of calcium carbide it has this is how uh, they uh, they make bonds ok. So, the most important organometallic compounds of group 2 metals are the Grignard reagents essentially they are having a general formula RMGX where R is an alkyl group magnesium and hex is an halide uh, they are very similar to organolithium reagents. Okay, in terms of their reactivity and application in organic synthesis and essentially this Grignard reagent is made by treating alkyl halide with magnesium metal in a solvent such as diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran or X plus Mg gives or Mg X ok. So, R M G X is always solvated by ether giving a tetrahedral geometry to magnesium and wisely used in the preparation of organic compounds or in the formation of C C bonds carbon carbon bond formation reactions Grignard reagents as well as lithium reagents are extensively used. Since I am devoting a few lectures to discuss the chemistry organometallic chemistry of uh, main group elements I will be giving more details about the application of Grignard reagent as well as organolithium reagents in organic uh, reactions. Besides making RMGX one can also make dialkyl magnesium compound they are also known, but they are less extensive when it comes to the application of uh, uh, these reagents in organic synthesis or carbon carbon bond formation. And of course, uh, uh, when we look into the structures of uh, some of these compounds dimethyl beryllium and dimethyl magnesium they have the polymeric structure very similar to BeH2 or BeCl2 that means, one can conveniently write in this fashion So, it goes like this one should remember beryllium is tetrahedral is surrounded by 
4 methyl groups and we have here 3 center 2 electron bonds. Just uh, uh, I, I would show you the application of uh, Grignard reagent in organic synthesis one reaction I will show you here. Let us consider a simple RMGCL and treat this one with a ketone. Initially it forms an intermediate of this type. So, this is how one can use uh, in uh, organic synthesis for example, a ketone will be giving tertiary alcohol. Similarly, one can also use in uh, reactions such as for example, if we take PCL3 and treat, treat PCL3 with 3 equivalents of ethyl magnesium bromide, one can conveniently make triethylphosphine of course, plus 3 equivalents of MgBr Cl will be formed. So, this is how one can utilize in making uh, main group elements to carbon bond either uh, employing uh, Grignard reagent or lithium reagent. So, why the reaction has to be carried out in diethyl ether? It gives coordinative saturation most of the time Grignard reagents will be having So, now it, it gives a kind of tetrahedral stable uh, geometry to magnesium. So, here one can conveniently use diethyl ether or one can also use tetrahedrofuran. This is called THF that is called tetrahedrofuran. This is a cyclic ether. I have shown uh, some of the structures of uh, Grignard reagents here. It can have simple dimeric structure in absence of any donor solvent such as ethers or one can also think of having a trinuclear structure like this. And organomagnesium compounds also show cyclic structure like this and most preferred one is this one where it is in, in order to make it exist in monomeric form, okay, it has to be stabilized using donor solvent such as diethyl ether or THF. Okay. In absence of any of these solvents, they associate to form dimeric structure or trimeric structure or trimeric cyclic structure and essentially establishing 3 center 2 electron bonds. Okay. And one can visualize 3 center 2 electron bonds here, yeah, same analogy one can use using valence bond theory or hybridization concept. Okay. So, let us look into the diagonal relationship between beryllium and aluminum. Uh, in fact, beryllium has more resemblance to aluminum rather than calcium or magnesium. Uh, beryllium 2 plus ionic radius, if you look into it, it is 31 picometer and charge to size ratio is quite high and that is comparable to Al 3 plus ion. As a result, they have very similar properties. Uh, and also reactivity. Aluminum forms an oxide film and as a result resistant to acid attack. Beryllium also forms the same, it forms a beryllium oxide layer okay, and thus prevents from further attack. And beryllium hydroxide dissolves in excess of alkali to form beryllite that means uh, tetrahydroxy beryllite. Aluminum does the same, it forms tetrahydroxy aluminate and chlorides of both beryllium and aluminum have bridge structures. Of course, uh, aluminum has uh, uh, dimeric structure whereas, beryllium has a polymeric structure. Both the chlorides in monomeric form are strong Lewis acids, both are electron deficient in nature 
and both of them are used in Fiddlecraft reaction to make carbon carbon bond. Uh, both have strong tendency to form complexes, okay. for example, uh, tetrafluoroberylate or hexafluoroaluminate something like that. And now let us look into the similarity between lithium and magnesium similar to beryllium and aluminum, we have similarities between lithium and magnesium. Uh, that means, some of the chemical properties of lithium that make it diagonal related to magnesium rather than vertically related to other alkali metals. I am summarizing now. The lithium readily combines with nitrogen to give nitride that is Li3N. Similarly, magnesium reacts with nitrogen to form magnesium nitride Mg3N2 and lithium combines with oxygen to give oxide Li2O rather than a peroxide or a superoxide. Similarly, magnesium forms magnesium oxide not superoxide. The peroxides of both metals can be formed by reacting lithium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide with hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Lithium and magnesium carbonates decompose readily on heating to give lithium oxide and carbon dioxide. Similarly, magnesium carbonate on heating gives magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, uh, the carbonates of the group 1 metals becomes increasingly stable with respect to thermal decomposition. Now, let us look into the bio biological importance of uh, uh, group 2 metals. First, let us focus our attention on calcium. Calcium is mainly found in the bones and teeth of living beings. Uh, blood is a large tank of this mineral. In fact, it has all minerals that are essential for human to survive. It helps in blood clotting. Deficiency of calcium increases the blood clotting time. So, calcium supports muscle contraction. The deficiency of this metal leads to disorder of nerves. It plays a significant role in the metabolism of nitrogen in plants. Absence of this mineral in the plants affects the size and number of chloroplasts. Okay. And when it comes to the biological importance of uh, magnesium, it is not lagging behind. Uh, it plays a major role in the activity of enzymes and also it acts as a fuel source and it is a protector of human DNA and also it has a major role in maintaining electrolyte balance. So, in human biology, you may be curious to know the fact that magnesium is the 11th most abundant element by mass in the human body. Its ions are essential to all living cells where they play a major role in manipulating important biological polyphosphate compounds such as ATP, DNA and RNA and hundreds of enzymes thus require magnesium ion to perform their function. Uh, magnesium compounds are used medicinally as common laxatives and also antacids for example, milk of magnesia and in a number of situations where stabilization of abnormal nerve excitation and blood vessel spasm is required, this is used and one uh, term called eclampsia then let me write here. So, it is essentially a severe complication of preeclampsia. It is a rare but serious condition where high blood pressure results in seizures during pregnancy for women. Uh, magnesium ions are sore to the taste and in low concentration they help to impart a natural tautness to fresh mineral waters. And in vegetation, magnesium is the metallic ion at the center of chlorophyll that is responsible for the production of food the, and also magnesium is an additive to fertilizers essentially to enrich plants with magnesium. Of course, uh, uh, this is a, a commercially available uh, ATP complex of magnesium and it is also co considered as a protector of human DNA. So, DNA synthesis is not possible without the sufficient supply of this ion that is magnesium ion. It is, it is responsible for the stability and proper functioning of DNA. 
to maintain an electrolyte balance it is one of the most important mineral in order to maintain a healthy electrolyte balance in our body. Deficiency of magnesium ion leads to the improper functioning of sodium potassium pump. I already explained what is sodium potassium pump while describing the chemistry of group 1 elements and especially while looking into the importance of alkali metals in biology. So, let us look into the activity of enzymes where magnesium plays a major role. Magnesium as an enzyme cofactor plays an important role in the breakage of glucose and fat molecule in the production of enzymes, proteins and regulation of cholesterol as well. Uh, it also acts as a fuel source that means it plays an important role in the production of energy within the cells without the sufficient supply of magnesium ion nutrients cannot be converted into usable energy or ATP. Of course, ATP means adenosine triphosphate which is the fundamental unit of energy in human body. Production of ATP is significant to perform various actions such as cell reproduction, protein synthesis, etc. So, with this okay, let us look into the uses of group 2 elements and their compounds. We come across uh, extensive utility of main group elements and their compounds in day to day life. Uh, for example, beryllium is used in making alloys, uh, a variety of alloys, copper beryllium alloy used in making high strength springs. Of course, springs comes uh, very handy in, in lot of uh, day to day materials. Metallic beryllium used in making windows for x-ray tubes and magnesium can conveniently combine with aluminum, zinc and manganese and also tin to make a variety of alloys with different uh, uh, properties. Magnesium aluminum alloys are used in aircraft construction and magnesium powder or ribbon is used in bulbs, incendiary bombs and signals and suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water is also called milk of magnesia used as an antacid and magnesium carbonate is also used in toothpaste and calcium is used in the extraction of metals from oxides which are difficult to reduce with carbon prior to the reduction to scavenge most of the uh, main group elements calcium is used in, in metallurgy. Calcium and barium metals owing to their reactivity with oxygen and nitrogen at elevated temperature used to remove air from vacuum tubes. So, in order to achieve very high vacuum to get rid of trace amount of oxygen or nitrogen. So, they are treated with calcium and barium at very high temperature. Radium salts are used in radiotherapy that is in cancer treatment. Magnesium oxide finds uh, important application as refractory material. Refractory materials are extensively used in furnace. This magnesium oxide it has a very high melting point of 3073 Kelvin and can withstand high temperature up to 2300 Kelvin for long periods and is relatively inexpensive. As a result for inner layering of furnace magnesium oxide is used in the form of bricks as refractory material. Magnesia is fabricated in bricks for lining furnaces in steel making incorporating chromium ore into refractory bricks increases their resistance to thermal shocks. Okay. So, that means one can also make an alloy and use it as a refractory material. Magnesia bricks are also widely used in night storage radiators. Magnesium oxide conducts heat extremely well, but also has the ability to store it without uh, much uh, loss of it. In a radiator, the bricks of made up of magnesium oxide absorb heat which is generated by electrically heated filaments during periods of off break and them radiate the thermal energy over relatively longer periods. So, that means essentially they store and that can be dissipated later to maintain a certain temperature inside the oven. Uh, and in, in some cases okay, in, in the radiator essentially it is used to absorb excess heat that is generated. 
magnesium oxide can be fabricated into bricks for lining furnaces in steel making I mentioned already. And uh, as I said, so that means they are conveniently used in night storage radiators. And in fact, another important property of magnesium oxide uh, is it conducts heat extremely well, but also has a remarkable ability to store it uh, without much leakage of uh, you know uh, temperature. Uh, when one looks for a commercial viable refractory oxide, uh, magnesium oxide comes very handy. It can be conveniently fabricated into bricks and several other type of material that I will show you in the next slide. Okay. You can see here, this is uh, magnesium oxide in the powder form. It can be molded into any of these shapes and this is a typical uh, okay, uh, furnace I have shown. Here if you look into it, furnace inside uh, is layered with this magnesium oxide uh, and here it can be uh, used okay, where the temperature of furnace goes up to more than 3000 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, let me stop at this juncture and in my next lecture, uh, let me come up with more uh, applications of uh, uh, group 2 elements and their compounds in day to day life. Thank you very much and have a pleasant reading of inorganic chemistry. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.